So last year I made a video talking about 10 Blender VFX ideas. Well, today I'm going to revisit that topic with 10 completely new ideas. If you guys want to watch the original video after this, I'll link it down below so you have even more ideas. Other than that, leave a like if you do enjoy the video, subscribe for more content like this. Let's hop into the tutorial and get started. So starting off, I'm going to show you this flora growth effect. I've seen a lot of people do this with flowers or grass, so that's what I'm going to show as my example. But just know that you can do this proximity scatter setup with any object you want. Also, a little bonus here, this proximity scatter effect is one of my preset effects in my Director 3D plugin. So if you want to just be able to click one button and be able to swap out the assets and do this, instantly check out that plugin down below. Either way, let me show you how we can do this from scratch. It's going to be a lot easier to achieve this using a simple geometry node setup. So first off, I'm going to go download some example assets to use for this. I downloaded this old car from Sketchfab as well as this little patch of grass and flower assets. Let's import both of those back into Blender. These are both GLB files, so it's automatically going to load the textures. To prep these models, I'm going to click Control Shift D to duplicate the exact grass parts that I want. Then I'm going to select them all, go to the Object tab, go to Parent, and then Clear Parent and Keep Transformation. I'm also going to make a new collection here and place all of those grass assets into that collection. Then I'm going to go to the object properties of each and zero them out so that each flower asset is at the world origin. This is important for when we scatter them onto the car later. So let's select our car here and we're going to switch to the geometry node workspace down below and I'm going to click to create a new geometry node system. We're going to start off by adding a distribute points on faces node in between here. Now you should be able to see all of these points across the car. Now this is a bit overkill. This might crash our computer. So I'm going to put the density down to something very low like 0.1. Next up, we want to see our car as well as the points. So I'm going to click Shift A and add in a join geometry node. And then we can take the geometry from the beginning and connect that together to see our car and the points. So now we want to place those grass and flower assets exactly where the points that we are distributing on the faces are. So to do that, we can use an instance on point node. Let's connect our original geometry to that node and then we can drag in that collection of grass assets that we imported earlier. Just drag the collection straight into the geometry node workspace and then connect that up to the instance slot. Now we can connect this all back together to the join geometry to actually see it all work and if we zoom in here we can see a little bit of the flowers they're just very small. So let's go over to our scale values here, bump this up to 10 just to be able to actually see everything. Now you can see here, some of the flowers are just sort of floating in midair and that's due to the location of the asset. So again, remember how we zeroed everything out before I accidentally missed this one. Let's just zero out the location and now everything's back to normal. So everything looks a bit too uniform. Let's go ahead and add in a random value node and then connect that to the rotation as well as to the scale. From here, you can make any adjustments to the size of things. And that's really about it for our basic setup. There's a ton of different ways where you could build on this, make it more customized or scatter across different parts of it. But I think this looks fine. Let's set up the main part of this effect, which is actually the growth effect. We're going to do that with a proximity scatter. So I'm going to start off here by clicking shift a and creating a sphere. Now make sure the sphere isn't in our instance collection or you're just going to see a ton of spheres all over the car. You can rename this to proximity controller or whatever you'd like. It's basically just going to be a placeholder object. Next up, let's set up that proximity scatter in the geometry node setup. So we're going to search for geometry proximity node. And then we're going to select that sphere and just drag that into the geometry node setup, just like we did with the collection. Very important, you also want to make the object info relative here. So next, let's add in a math node here, and we're going to change this math node to multiply. And we want to connect that multiply to the maximum random value, which is controlling our scale. So we can move our sphere around here and you can see how that effect is taking place. You can see you can scale the sphere. If you want to make this a bit easier to see and control, you can go to the shader settings, put the alpha down to zero, and then change the blend settings to alpha clip. That way it's just going to be a see-through sphere. And now you can see what it's looking like if we scale the sphere up or down. So with this setup, you can now animate the sphere to create any sort of growth pattern you want. It's really up to you. Just make some keyframes, mess around with it, find something that you think looks good. Again, this is an extremely basic geometry node setup. I wanted to make it as easy to understand from a logic standpoint. There's a lot of really cool things you can do to build on this. I'm just going to show you the full node setup in case I went too fast. You can just copy what I'm showing here. 
Now we all know making visual content is hard, so before we move on to the next example, I want to talk about the sponsor of today's video because they've helped me a ton when it comes to editing and 3D. Today's video is sponsored by Motion Array. Motion Array is a one-stop shop for video creators. They offer thousands of different assets that can help you make your content better and in a more efficient way. There are so many different elements that go into making a great video, whether that's graphics, plugins, music, or sound effects. Motion Array offers all of this in one place so you don't have to hop around sourcing different assets or spending time making graphics from scratch. For me personally, I like to take my 3D renders into post and then hop into Motion Array to browse through different color LUTs, overlays, and sound effects that can make the final product even better. I also really love their plugins. I'm going to download these glow transitions as well as these distorted glass overlays and then bring them into Premiere to apply to my project. And just like that, extremely quick, very easy. There's tons of things just like this, like TV distortion, glitching, cinematic looks, you name it. So yeah, very useful. I highly recommend it. If you guys are interested, click the link at the top of my description for $50 off an annual subscription. Next up, I want to talk about some crumble VFX. I've been seeing a lot of viral short form content utilizing this. So I'm going to show you in a nutshell how we could achieve something like this. In theory, this is really easy to pull off. If you go up to the object tab in Blender and then scroll down to quick effects, you're going to find this cell fracture effect. You can apply this, change the settings, add in things like noise to change the chunk pattern. Once it's applied, your object is going to split into a bunch of individual pieces. All you have to do from there is select all of those pieces and then go into the object tab once again and add rigid body physics. This will give some physics simulations to all of the pieces, which means they'll now fall over. You can do things like adding a plane and go into the physics tabs for that plane and enabling collisions so that the parts will actually land on the plane and collide with it. That's really about it for the basics of how this works. If you want to take it a step further, you can do it with some footage. Now, anytime you're compositing VFX with footage, especially shots where the camera is moving, there's going to be a lot of different steps that go into it. So I'm going to show you what you need to do in a nutshell, and then I'm going to link some full length guides relating to this down below. I found some footage that is going to work well for this. I want this guide to crumble at the exact moment of impact. So I'm going to take a screenshot of our clip in After Effects at the exact frame where he's getting kicked. From here, we need to convert this guy into a 3D model. So I'm going to take that screenshot into Photoshop and then just use some of the selection tools to isolate him from the background. I'll save that as a PNG and I'm ready to start converting to a 3D model. Now to do that, you could use some image projection in Blender or you could use one of those new AI 3D model generators that have been popping up. I tried out this one here and the results were actually very good. So I'm going to download this once more and then I'll set up my footage in Blender using the images as planes add on. And then I'm going to load in that 3D model of the guy on the left. From here, we just need to apply that explode effect that I showed you earlier. And that's really about it. If this was shot on a tripod, all I would have to do is add in a camera, zero out the location, and then just raise the camera up until the frames of the camera are matching the edges of my footage. Once that's looking the way you want, you can render out only the shatter effect with a transparent background. And now comes the annoying part. We need to do a bunch of masking to make this all work. First, you'll need a clean plate of the background. I did this with Photoshop by just selecting both people and then using generative fill to remove them from the background entirely. Then we can hop into After Effects. I'm going to load in my original footage, my clean plate, and my shatter render. I'm going to rotoscope out the two people to isolate them from the background and then place my clean plate as a layer below. At the moment of impact, I'm going to change the roto brush to mask only the guy on the right, and then I'm going to import in my shatter animation. Whenever you put it all together at full speed, it looks like this. Pretty cool. If this is something that interests you, let me know in the comments. I can make a more in-depth guide covering this and other similar physics-based things. Number three is explosions. These are always fun and honestly pretty easy to pull off. Of course, you could use Blender's particle system or geometry nodes to make these from scratch, but that would take a fair bit of time, especially to render out. So a great alternative is to use free open VDB explosion files. I'm going to link those down below. While I'm downloading some of those, I'm going to show you an even easier and more lightweight option. You can download any MP4 of an explosion or any other VFX and bring it straight into Blender using that images as planes add on once again. Now, the great thing about images as planes, once once you load it in, it basically sets it all up for you. If you want, you can go into the shader editor and control things like the brightness or change color or whatever. 
If you're moving around a lot in 3D, you could also try and do some billboarding techniques, which is essentially making 2D assets always face the camera to appear 3D. If you want to do this, you just need to add a track to constraint and set the target to the camera. And there we go. A nice lightweight little option for some visual effects. But either way, let's load in our VDB 3D files here. This is pretty easy. You just need to click Shift A and then Blender has this VDB volume option. From there, you can just select the VDB files that you downloaded. And there we go. If you look at the shader editor, you're going to notice all of the necessary parts like temperature and density are automatically loaded in for you via that principal volume. So from here, you can change around the temperature, you can change around the color, you can change the density of the smoke or whatever else you want. Next, let's talk about some product animation visual effects. Now, this has been going viral again all over social media. A lot of people doing this with buildings and sort of augmenting them. A lot of people also just doing this with normal product shots, compositing them into your scene. I'm going to show you the basic setup. And then again, I found a full guide using the exact footage that I was using here. If you want to take this more in depth. So for this to work, I recommend you download the software FSpy. It's free. And what it essentially does is calculates the camera for you. So all you have to do is align things up with your scene in FSpy here, and then you can just save your file and open that up in Blender using the Blender to FSpy importer add-on. Now, once you open up that FSpy file, you're going to see your camera is perfectly aligned. Our default cube is exactly where it needs to be. The ridges are lining up with this building. So all you have to do here is model out your cube with some bevels and some extrudes. I'm going to use this loop cut tool just to sort of cut across where I want to be able to see inside the building and then I'll just delete these faces and now you can create whatever sort of product ad you want. Again, that full guide is going to take you way more in depth and show you all the different design things. I just added a little sphere and added a emitter particle system here just to show you you can really get some cool looking results when you blend 3D with real life and this workflow is probably one of the easiest ways to do that. And then last but not least, we have stylized 2D energy VFX. Now, I love these because these are mainly run just with procedural shaders, and you can really do a lot of different things with them. All we need to do is click Shift A and create a Bezier curve, and then we can come down to the curve settings and open up geometry and actually offset and extrude this to turn it into a mesh. Cool thing about doing things this way, we have that 3D geometry, but it's still controlled all with a spline. So we'll talk about that a bit later. Let's for now switch over to the shader editor. So for our cartoon energy blast, we're going to add in a color ramp and connect that to the emission slot. And then we're going to add in a Fresnel node and connect that to the color ramp. Let's bump up the strength of the emission so we can see a little bit of that glow and we'll turn on bloom and EV just to see that. For the movement and patterns of the energy, we're going to achieve that with a noise texture. So we'll click shift A and add in a noise texture node. And we're gonna control that with a color ramp node. So we'll connect those two together and then we'll plug that into the alpha. Now, because we're working with alpha here, we're gonna have to go to the material settings and change the blend settings from opaque to alpha clip. That way the noise will actually cut away from the mesh and give us this sort of transparency. Now let's control where this disappearing is going to take place. We can do that with a mapping node as well as a texture coordinate node. Let's connect those together and then place that into the vector of the noise texture. In terms of the animation for the energy, we can do that easily with a little driver. In this mapping node here, I'm just going to type in hashtag frame divided by 20. And that way it's going to animate the X location of our pattern. We can do that with the Y as well. And now we're getting this sort of flowing energy. And again, the cool thing about doing this with a Bezier curve, you can easily create any pattern you want for the energy just by selecting the curve and clicking E to extrude. You can even use the pen tool if you want, which is really cool. So again, that's the basics of it. You can build on this setup by adding things like more mapping nodes and gradient nodes to control where the fall off of the actual texture is. There's other fun things you can do, like adding customized meshes to create things like fireballs or create different sort of animated textures using a similar setup. I think this is great for creating some quick customizable visual effects, whether you're making a comic book, a music video, or whatever. So there are my five Blender VFX and how to make them. This is a two-part video. I have another five ideas coming out next. Leave a like if you want to see that. I have some really cool ideas for that one. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for supporting, and I'll see you guys in the next one.